So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to work with the posture. Today is day eight. So yesterday we spent time with the back. Before that, we spent time with yin yoga and letting passively, letting gravity do the work instead of us. And there is a there is a order to this. These are not just random days that I just decided this day will be that day and this day will be like chat GPT did not tell me what I'm going to do each day. <laughs> um, I actually thought about how we're building into things and we built into posture because posture is one of those things that if you tell somebody stand up straight, they go like this, feel like this and, they, ah, and they'll remember for the next five seconds. And then they'll forget again. And then they'll go like this. They'll be here, and they'll go here, 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 and here, here. And sometimes people end up with something called scoliosis, and sometimes you're born with it. I have scoliosis. I spend a lot of time in my posture. I spent days, and I had a teacher who spent half of a year fixing me, adjusting my posture for 30 minutes. 30 minutes just going, Pinch, pull, pinch, pull, pinch, pull, until I found straight. Um, and I have scoliosis, so I'm not saying that you that it's your fault and you got to walk around with a, a, a halter on all the time. But I am saying that posture is not something that you can actively fix all the time, but it is something that you can help gravity help you to fix. And today we are going to look at five poses that are going to encourage good posture. And there is no such thing as good or bad. I know that's not fair. The only reason I say good is because I really love efficiency. And when we stand up straight, our chakras, which we learned about in the second day, our chakras are actually also aligned. We value, as a culture, we value this more than this. And so we have a lot of people walking around like this and that's how they end up like that. Because they're trying to put what you think is most important, they're trying to put that forward. And um, there are some people who walk like this. And when you put your heart front and center like that, it actually pushes people away. So these people go, I'm very loving and kind. And it can almost feel like they love a little too much. <laughs> and then we have people who are led by their sex organs. And typically that's not because they're highly sexual. It's because they are pleasers. They're people pleasers and they will scoop under. And it's kind of like when you see a dog who's scared. When a dog is scared, they scoop their tail under. And that's to um, hide in a way. And they're hiding behind. This is this sacral chakra is like a door. It's like the guard. It's constantly scanning people and places and things to say that's safe, that's not safe. Well, some people rely on their guard, like the movie Bodyguard, and they end up clinging to it. And they're led by this because they're trying to be safe. But actually what they're doing is they are putting way too much responsibility on the guard. The guard is not the president. The guard is the person who guards the president. And so they end up scooping under and that can cause so many, many, many skeletal issues. All of these do. Anything that's out of alignment is going to cause um, misalignment and the body is going to adjust itself for the misalignment and then adjust itself. And then suddenly what we find comfortable What we find comfortable is unsafe and it's unsustainable for our bodies. And we end up not being able to enjoy life as long as we might like because we can't see. And so these are preventative tools to keep you open and things can happen. I was in a very awful car accident in 2012. I was bent over. There was nothing I could do. And it didn't matter that I had done yoga and spin that morning it did not matter that was where my body was i was it was 
um, I don't remember how old I was. I think I was in my 20s. And yeah, and that's what happens sometimes. So you can take preventative action. Nothing's guaranteed. But what we feed is going to grow. And when you feed yourself the tools for a great posture, there's a strong chance that you will grow to be comfortable in your wholeness because actually being in aligned posture simply means that all of the chakras are aligned. One is not above the other and you are aligned with yourself and you are not trying to be above another or have another um, need to be above you. So let's begin. As usual, we're going to start with the five Tibetan rituals. <sighs> How exciting. Okay. I really, I could talk about posture all day. In fact, I have multiple videos on posture, so I will try and link them if I can find them. I'm cleaning up the channel right now. And so, um, oh, before we start, you need, you need something very important. You need a towel today. So grab a towel. It doesn't have to be a thin towel. It just needs to be something that can be this thick eventually, okay? So let me give you just 30 seconds to grab a towel. Oh, you could pause the video to do that, right? Okay, but it is live, and for people who are live on this on this video, I want to make sure that you can get the towel. Okay, that's thirty seconds. So let's get ready to do the five. Let me see how much space I have. That's gonna work. Excellent. Okay. So we have. Our two feet are standing side by side. We're pushing into the ground. Our shoulders are pinned towards the heart. Our hips are seated in the center of our legs, not in front, not in back. And our shoulders come down. And by spiraling our shoulders down, look what happens. Our arms rise. We spiral our shoulders down. Our arms rise up. Our fingers are, they have a soft activation. They're not soft activation. Our chin is parallel to the ground, parallel, and our gaze is on the ground. Hey, Wit, I'm going to need you to thank you. Our gaze is on the ground, and let's begin. One, two, three, four, five. Close your body, close your eyes. Allow the spin to find you, coming into equilibrium with yourself, with the earth. Mm. Camel. Legs are parallel, hands are parallel. Once again, shoulders pinned towards the heart. We're going to begin on the inhale. Inhale. The elbows are pulling towards each other. Moving forward, let's move to J. Starting on the inhale. Tabletop. Gazes over the legs at the sky or breaking the neck backwards. Let's begin. Oh, my hands are a little too narrow that time. Um, make sure that your hands are on either side of your hips so that the hips can comfortably slide through. Otherwise, um, <laughs> it's going to be more difficult. <laughs> 
obviously. And make sure you're using the safe grip for the hands. Okay, back to it. <laughs> Let's start with number one. Inhale, exhale. And to our final one, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Lining up my hands, making sure that they're going to be protected. Let's begin, inhale. Letting everything come together. Inhale. And you can take an om or just a beautiful exhale to bring this all together. Inhale. Okay. Today, our first pose is going to be on our feet. We have been diligently working a variety of different body parts. And what we, what we do on the mat translates into balances, balancing poses, translates to what we do in the air. <laughs> so today we're going to do one of our first intensive balancing poses of the series. We're going to learn dancer's pose. And dancer's pose is one of those poses that's going to work with the neck, the shoulders, and the hips at the same time. It's almost like you're doing bow pose, which, I mean, excuse me, bound pose, where we really, where we were laying on the ground and we had the one leg like that, and we were holding it. It's like we're doing that, but we're standing. So dancer's pose is a great way to open up the front side body. And when we need posture, we need the body. A lot of times what happens is that it's actually the core and these, their muscles right here. You should actually go to a massage therapist and one day ask them just to do the chest. And it's amazing how much, how close we are and how tight this area can be. So we're going to open up here and we're going to open up here at the same time in dancer's pose. So to prepare for dancer's pose, we're going to kick one leg up. This is very, I use the preparation that we use in Bikram for bow pose. Bikram says, um, Mommy, may I please have some money? And you put out your hand and then you put it out to the side and then you put, so this is, I'm going to start with my right side body. I'm gonna put out my right hand. My elbow is pinned to my waist. It's going to rotate to the right. The arm is going to stay on that side. The eye of my elbow is pointing to the short side of the mat on the right. I'm going to Flip back my right foot and grab my right ankle with my right hand. Very similar to bound pose. And then instead of bow pose, which is what they do in Bikram, we're going to take dancer's pose. So we're going to keep the upper body up and the focus is on that bow that makes the beautiful dancer. Our, my knee is pointing towards the ground. I'm going to push against the ground. The more I push against the ground, this goes back to our grounding work. The more I push against the ground, the more easily I can balance. Now, if I put my hand out like this, let me show you sideways. If I put my hand out like this, this is dancer's pose. You have got it. If this is where you are today, stay there. I'm going to show you where I'm going and then I'm going to we're going to build together on how to get there. So bring everything back down. You've just warmed up for dancer's pose. Bring everything back down. And now I'm going to show you where we're going. Dancer's pose is going to look like this. We're going to bring the arm and the leg up. 
the focus is on everything staying parallel to the ground and forward to the ground. So there is no twisting. It is everything is lined up and parallel. And then the leg is just going to come up. And then that's dancer's pose. And the leg will just go up, 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 up as you get warmer. It is a sunrise yoga class. I do not expect your leg to go up. I expect you to be where you are. But I want you to always think of the leg is coming up, the body's coming up, and keeping those together so that we get that lovely arc. And the hands are in, um, I cannot remember the name of this mudra, but the finger is going to touch the thumb. And that is the activation there. So again, mommy, may I have some money? Daddy, may I have some money? <laughs> Sister, may I have some money? And then we're going to turn to the side. We're going to flip up the leg and we're going to break, take the arm in the mudra and we are in dancer's pose. Now, some of us are going to want to remember we have these posture things going on. So this is the opportunity to feel that openness. That shoulder has to be pinned down. That's why I love this. The shoulder has to be pinned down in order to catch this foot. Pushing down and thinking about that spiral it's happening under the butt that's spiraling from the earth around and around and around the leg so that when you think of the spiral, you can't sag because the spiral, you have to activate the muscles that are going to push and ground you into the ground. So we're in dancer's pose. And if you feel like it, you can let the leg rise. You're kicking up, 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 up. The palm of the foot is facing the sky. And that's as far as I'm going today. That's where I am today. Breathing all along. The gaze is up to the hand. Oh, I fell. <laughs> the gaze is up to the hand. Hmm. Feeling the root to rise. You cannot go high if you do not push down. And one more inhale here. And bring it all back. Click, 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 click. Like a little robot, let everything come back into place. Let's take the other side. So, please, parent, may I have some money? Arm comes out, left hand is pinned to the side. Left hand comes up. Left hand comes now to point to the long side of the mat. Left hand comes down, ready to catch the left foot. Left foot comes up. Knee points towards the ground. Left hand grabs left ankle. The body is aligned just like bound pose, except that we're standing this time. The core is activated, but just a, just a small activation. We're not doing ab workouts here. The hand comes up and out into the mudra for this pose which is pointer finger, touching thumb, kicking up and back and up and back. We can bring our leg higher when we let our front body bend more forward. If we let our front body bend too far forward, we're doing bow pose and that is a different set of cues. Oh boy, uh, I can't get the gaze up on this side today. It's not happening. So I'm going to let my gaze stay on the earth. But ideally in this pose, we want the gaze to go up to the fingers. I wanna rotate open and open my legs. Make sure to keep your body parallel. One more inhale here. And click, 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 click. Let everything come back together. So that's your first pose. You should be feeling activity in your chest in your upper back, in your hips, in your abs. Dancers, <laughs> dancers pose is the gift that keeps on giving. The next pose we're gonna look at is, we're just going to hang in Uttanasana. It's so important to hang. And ideally, when you get there, the best place to hang is in handstand. I don't know if I can do, let me see. <clears throat> So if you can get to handstand or if you know handstand, handstand is a great place 
to let the head dangle. Now, if you're practicing handstand for balance, the gaze is towards the ground. But when you're practicing handstand for opening your upper body, shaking your head no, shaking your head yes, giving your body the gift of letting your neck hang with nothing holding, nothing pushing on it in the other direction is incredibly special. Handstand allows you to do that and let your legs just push against the wall. And that's how you can really, really let things open up in the neck. Now, most of us aren't there yet. This is a beginner's class. I'm just showing you where we're going. All those times when I say push into the hands and make sure to protect, use your protective hands, it's because it's gonna make handstand much easier. But that openness is what I want you to get to feel. And one way to feel kind of like that, to feel almost that level of openness, because we need that freedom in the neck. We need the neck to know what it feels like to not have any strain. The neck has a lot of responsibility. It is the channel between the head and the heart. And if there's a traffic jam, the neck is what feels it. It's what seizes up. And that's why we end up like this. Because we're trying, because so much is stuck here. I hate even acting it out. So let's do Uttanasana and open this part up. Uttanasana is just simply, let's um, hmm, let's roll down the spine to get to Uttanasana. Our feet are a little less than hip width apart. And here, we're just going to grab our arms, elbow to elbow. We're gonna bend our legs so that we're not straining our hamstrings and the muscles that go all the way up through to our lower back. And we're just gonna shake the head, no. And here we're feeling that same freedom in the neck. Shake the head, yes. Good posture is just like flexibility. Good posture is less about how you're placing things and more about, let's shake your head no, more about which muscles are relaxed. The more relaxed the muscles are, the stronger chance they're in alignment, they're tucked in safely into the right skeletal structure. Shake the head yes. They're tucked into the right skeletal structure so their muscles aren't doing extra work. They're not straining. Shake the head no. If they're not straining, you're probably not in, out of alignment and you have good posture. It should feel free and easy up here. It shouldn't feel tight. You shouldn't get headaches. But if you do, then do this. Do dancer's pose. Okay, the hands are gonna come down. They're gonna push against the ground. You're gonna push the body up and roll back up through the spine. Mm. Let's now go to our third pose which is camel. We know camel very, very well. In alignment with having freedom and feeling that freedom in our neck, we're going to take camel pose. And this time we're going to take it in a bit of a different way because when we are doing camel for, um, not in a hatha way, I mean in a vinyasa way, but in a hatha way, we are going to hold it for just a, this time we're only going to hold it for one minute because camel can be quite taxing. But we're going to still put the arms down, but remember we're not going to come back up. So go very slowly here. We're not going to go back and forth, back and forth. So just inhale here. You guys all know how to get into camel. Instead of the feet, the tops of the feet lying flat with the ground, kissing the ground, the, we're actually going to bring our heels towards us so that we can grab them so that they're closer to us. So we're going to inhale and exhale, opening through the heart, shoulders pinned down, letting the gaze go towards the back wall. Now, if this is where you are, if the gaze is here and you're like, that's as far as I'm going today, that's camel pose. It might go a little bit farther back, that's camel. A little further back, that's camel. And if you feel comfortable, you can lean it all the way back. And that's camel too. When we grab the heels, make sure to bring the hips pushing forward to counter that stretch, that push back, push the hips forward. 
If you feel up to it, you can also bring the heels down and bring the feet back to flat. But I am not there this morning. One more breath here. And build back up. Build up, build up, build up. And to counter that, let's just... Let me see what I've got. Yeah. To counter that, we're just going to bend the bring the tops of the feet to the ground and bend the head forward. Always the shoulders are staying pinned. You won't get to feel any of these stretches if the shoulders are not pinned to the heart. That's how you do it. So now we're going to take cow face pose, which is a lovely, lovely pose. And this is why we want this towel. We need this towel for cow faced, and we need the towel for our final pose. So cow face pose is, <laughs> we're going to make a cow face with our legs. So you're going to start with one leg on the ground. We're going to start with the left leg. It's bent. You see that this is my body, right? And this is my knee. The knee is essentially in the center of my body. And the foot, the foot is flat to the ground. The left side of the foot is flush with the ground. I'm going to take my right foot, my right leg, and I'm going to cross it over and it's going to sit on top. So it's making a diagonal. It's comfortably laying along, my right thigh is laying along my left calf. The farther out I put my legs in cow face pose, the harder the pose. So I recommend starting with the legs tight like a V. And as you get stronger, you will be able to open up. So we're gonna take our right shin and we're going to pull it back with our left hand and now our two knees it's hard to see because my i'm wearing black on black but i've learned that the camera doesn't like other colors <laughs> um but let me do this so that you can distinguish so that you can see what's happening my knees are on top of each other that's the cow face so it's like this it's like the cow has like a little thing in its mouth although you would never put a bridle in a cow's mouth. So this is the beginning of the pose. This could be as far as you go for some people. And then you would expand the feet out. And as you expand them out, you can hold on to the feet like you're driving. <laughs> in yoga class, we had this teacher and he'd be like, vroom, vroom, like a motorcycle, like you're driving. But um, anyways, that is cow face pose. And you can take the legs as wide as you want all the way to where they're flat. Then the top of cow face pose, you're gonna use a towel or your hands. I'll show you without the hands first. Because right leg is on top, right arm is on top. It's going to point up to the sky. The elbow is gonna stay pointed to the sky. The left arm is going to do the same thing, except the elbow is gonna point down towards the ground. The two hands are gonna to come together. They're gonna to grab each other. They're gonna hold on to each other. And then you're gonna bend forward. And this is the complete cow face pose. Bend forward with the reaching up and over, opening all of the back and all of the front, the chest at least, not the, uh, not the abs clearly, those are crunched. And that's cow face pose. Now, this is why the towel is so helpful because you can grab the towel, elbow points towards the sky, hold the towel, left elbow points towards the ground. And then with the towel, you have that connection Ideally, you want to be able to rest, to feel like your elbow is like supporting your back of your head and it pulls forward and over. I always kiss my knees when I come close to them because they are just so special. Knees do a lot of work. Let's do the other side. So first things first, right is on the ground. Here's my hips, here's my other hip, here's the center of my body. The knee is um, in the center of my body. It is across from, the, from my belly button. Left leg is gonna loop up and over. Each side is different. Remember, right side's different from left side. So don't try to say, oh, I had my legs totally open on, on the right, on the left side, so they should be open on the right. That's not true. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that our seat Make sure our sits bones are touching the ground. And so you notice that I was going like this. I'm moving the fat 
so that my bones can touch the ground. And then we're going to take the left hand up. The left elbow points to the sky. Right hand down. Right elbow points to the sky. If the shoulders are not, are pinned towards the heart, you have no problem here. If they're not pinned towards the heart, this is gonna be a very uncomfortable pose. And of course, you can use the towel modification as I showed. Another option is that you can take a bolster or a block and sit a little higher. And that will allow you a bit more freedom in the, in the openness of the legs. If you wanna take your legs open and feel how that feels, you'll get a little bit more freedom there with a support. So let's reach up, inhale, and fold forward. And as in any pose where gravity is having a clear effect, as you deepen and expand in the pose, let your body expand. Don't try to hold where you were when you started it. Let the body expand. One more inhale here. And exhale, pushing down to come up. And unfolding the pose the same way we got into it. And now we have our final pose. We're at the 30 minute mark. And I will edit it a little bit. Um, so maybe we won't be at the 30 mark in the completed video, but just in case for those of you who are doing it live, if you need to go, then this is the 30 minute mark and then come back and do this later. Cause this is the, I think this is the most important pose when it comes to posture. This is the pose that my osteopath gave me when I needed to work on my um, scoliosis and it's been very helpful and I do this, um, I try to do this each day for 20 minutes. You're going to roll your towel into a long um, roll like this. And then you're going to lay your, I'm going to take this over here. You're going to lay the towel along the ground and you're going to bring your body To the wall for legs up the wall pose. Legs up the wall pose is really important. It's necessary to invert once a day. When you're on your period in your first three days of your menses, you should not invert. You should not aggressively have your heart below your head because it counteracts with what's happening in your body. The fluid is exiting, not trying to stay in. So you can do legs up the wall. If you're at a yoga class where people are doing inversions, you can do legs up the wall. Instead, this is legs up the wall pose. My butt is kissing the wall. My legs are resting on the wall. And I made that roll and it is just under my spine. So it is just a little bump under my spine so that either side of my, the muscles that are connected to either side of my spine these are going to get just a little nudge to open up more, to relax more. This also gives my, from the other direction, that's happening in the back, in the front, my front side body is opening up in two directions as well because of this bolster that I have under my spine. It's forcing my body to open in a very passive way. I don't know if you've seen the videos of um, the yoga teacher who travels around uh, the Bronx and she helps the elderly heal their body from, um, from debilitating scoliosis. You know, people would say, I had not seen this guy naturally without laying on the ground. I haven't seen this guy in years. And, and she would lay them out on a table every day, 20 minutes. And she would just press in different places and help their muscles unbind and help their body open up.
Hmm. Letting everything open up. We won't stay here long. The point of the challenge is to introduce you to yoga and introduce you to different poses and their benefits. We're looking a lot at benefits and soon we'll get into more series of poses so that you can start to um, feel one of the main benefits, which is fitness. Although I have to say, we don't always leave here without a little bit of sweat. Huh? We build a little bit of um, warmth and power and energy. Okay, one more breath here, inhale. Belly rise, exhale, belly fall. Let's move the legs off of the wall. Move to the center of the mat. Take easy pose with support. Grab your journal. And when we turn off the video, you can recommit today to your 30 day challenge. Today is day eight. Today we worked with posture. We worked with your consideration to step into the world, engage the world as your whole self and not as the person that you think the world wants you to be. Letting the eyes float closed, letting the hands sit on the heart, resting there. Bring the right hand, uh, bring the left hand over the heart, bring the right hand over the belly around the sacral chakra, beneath the belly button above the womb, I mean above the um, seat. And breathe here. Thank yourself, thank this world that nudged you, compelled you to do this challenge. Thank the life that you're going to make and thank the life that you've already had. Have a beautiful day. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. That was fun. Okay. I will see everybody tomorrow. Thank you for joining and have a wonderful day. Mwah.